Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome to another episode of Mushroom Wonderland. Today, me and my dog Gunner are gonna go into the woods to discover what kind of mushrooms are growing out here. I'll help to describe them for you. We'll discover if they're edible, deadly, hallucinogenic, maybe medicinal. My name is Aaron Hilliard. I'm the vice president of the Kitsap Peninsula Mycological Society. Make sure to hit subscribe and let's go see what's in the forest of Mushroom Wonderland in March of 2024. Mushroom Wonderland. So check out what we got growing right here on this log. A nice flush of oyster mushrooms. These are a good edible mushroom and they're growing right now in March in the Northwest and probably across the country really. Um, these are pretty easy to identify. First of all, they're growing on hardwood. So this is a red alder that's rotten and dead. It's always dead wood that they're growing on and uh, they're feeding on the inside of this wood and then these are the fruiting bodies. These are just the spore producing um, what we call basidiocarp. That's the fancy name for a mushroom, right? But it looks pretty different from a lot of the ground dwelling mushrooms. These ones grow in shelves like this. They have these gills that run way down the stipe like this. Um, this one's got some weird coloration on it, but they always have the smell of anise or licorice. These ones are white, kind of gray towards the edge and kind of a ruffly edge of the cap, that's called an undulating margin. And so um, these ones uh, are doing good here. This little uh, warm weather has really helped them to just sprout. And you could definitely take these home and cook them and eat them. They're the same ones that you're gonna find in the grocery store, the oyster mushrooms, you know? So Pleurotus, Pulmonarius group. This one probably an undescribed distinct species growing here in this area. I think I've heard it, um, these particular ones sequence out to like Pleurotus species pnw07 so anyways that's scientific lingo for yummy mushrooms that you can find in the woods right now um, so go near a wetland like this this is like a swampy area um, in a forest a mixed forest so we have a lot of conifer here but also hardwood so oh look at up there beautiful flushes of oyster mushrooms growing up here these ones are much younger if you want to get those down you could just get a long stick and kind of poke them down be careful but um you know some of these logs that they're growing on if they're still standing like this snag this is what we call a widow maker but all around here there's alder and big leaf maple that are falling over and you can find flushes of oysters just like this easy to pick right at, at eye level you know and you could come out and fill up a nice basket with these they are pretty fragile they don't last too long i would i would suggest kind of let them dry out and toughen up on your counter for a little while before you put them in a paper bag into the fridge. But I'd slice them up and use them pretty quick. Um, they're known to be prone to flies and gnats, which lay eggs, which grow larvae. So these will get wormy pretty quick here. Um, this one's got a strange coloration. So it's like, it's like rotting away. That one's weird. But anyways, these are definitely oyster mushrooms. And you can see they almost have a violet tinge, but it's kind of more of a gray color and uh, yeah, interesting. And uh, these are delicious, good edible mushrooms. I might actually look for some better quality ones. Like those ones up there have a nice rounded margin on them where these ones are very undulating, which means they're old. They're past their prime and old oyster mushrooms to me means worms and fly larvae. But exciting to see these big fleshy edible mushrooms out here. You can definitely come out with your basket and get to foraging for edible mushrooms now. It was kind of a long stretch through winter there um, where there just wasn't much growing, you know. Uh, thank goodness for truffles, you know. I got really into truffles this winter and they're gonna start kind of winding down for the season, but we're seeing oyster mushrooms. These are probably the first big fleshy mushroom that comes out um, that's a good edible. And then we're gonna have morels coming out soon. So, exciting. So here I am in this kind of boggy 
swampy wetland area where all these snags and downed logs are. This is a great place to look for oyster mushrooms. If you know of an area like this, head out there today and uh, go find some oyster mushrooms to take home, slice up and just replace any mushroom recipe with the oyster mushrooms and they'll be good. So, yeah, pretty exciting. Wow, look right here, a nice fruiting of lichen umphila. Look at this, this greenish color on this stump is the lichen. And then it creates these fruiting bodies. So it's not uh, truly a fungi in the traditional sense. Although very beautiful, look at the cantharellus like decurrent gills. You know, it's depressed in the center of the disc. It's got kind of this scalloped edge. Looks a lot like an umbrella. So lichen umphila is a component of a fungi, I mean of a, of a lichen. So it's actually fungi and algae growing together. But this is a pretty nice little fruiting, I love that. Very magical looking little fruiting bodies. Not even gonna call them mushrooms because it's not technically a fungi. So anyways, lichen umphila, um, these are cold resistant. They're some of the first things we're gonna see coming out pre-spring, you know what I mean? Um, but a beautiful fruiting of them here on the stump. A very deep green lichen coloration. There's a lot of beautiful lichen out right now. So I'm liking it. Very nice. Ooh, look at this mushroom growing right down here off of this stick. This is a pretty common one, kind of a leathery looking mushroom, actually very tough. And if you look underneath, it's got pores. So this is a polypore and look at the dark stipe. So stipe is stem and fungal language attached to the wood there. This is called the black footed polypore. You can see why, right? That's the common name, scientific name, Pisapis badius. And this one, inedible, it's just really tough, and it's cold tolerant, and it likes growing on sticks like this. And this has been a pretty big year for them, so I found big flushes of these. They're sort of funnel shaped, they're always darker right in the center. And again, you're gonna have little tiny pores, there's no gills, um, and it's a leathery mushroom that it can stand up to the frost. Inedible, probably just leave this one to look at and keep walking. So I came walking to this one spot where there's a lot of sword fern, red cedar, and big leaf maple. And this area seems to put off a lot of hygrosophy or wax caps. And I feel really lucky. I've been walking around for a while and I was losing hope, but here we go amongst the cedar scales and the big leaf maple leaves and sword fern. We have these super brightly colored mushrooms. Look at this. Whoa. So this one, Hygrosabi flavescens, or you can, you know, you could compare it to that anyways. It might be its own species here in the Northwest. This one's pretty viscid. Uh, it's very slimy and uh, very vibrant though, right? Really, really colorful. I see another one right here poking out. And so these are cold weather tolerant mushrooms and they sure are pretty and they stand out a lot. This one, the genus Hygrosabi um, these are mushrooms that are commonly called wax caps because of their waxy like um, appearance. You know, those gills, or some people call them wax gills. You see that? They just, they just look way different than your average mushroom. Look at that super hollow stipe. Gills are pretty much attached in there. Come on. 
There we go. These are going to have white spores. You can see some spore deposit right there on the apex of the stipe. And here, this kind of irregular curled margin. They look a little bit uh, like an orange peel or something laying on the ground, but these are beautiful, not known to be you know, edible. I don't know anybody that wants to eat these. Flav essence, flav meaning yellow. And so, um, you know, you can see how they get their name. So, or at least it's a, it's close to that. You know, it's, it's a related one, but I find them in these areas where not a lot of other mushrooms like to grow, you know, amongst these, uh, these cedar, cedar scales. You know, this isn't, uh, this isn't even a true cedar. This is called a red cedar, one word, because it's like a false cedar, but they have these scales just like redwood and, uh, sequoia. Any, any of these trees that have these scales don't necessarily, you know, have ectomycorrhizal associates, and uh, nor does big leaf maple, but these habitats is where hygrosophy like to grow. So anyways, you know, this is a big genus of mushrooms. A lot of people love studying these, and they sure are pretty, so definitely going to get some photos of these. And they can handle some snow and some frost, and uh, you don't see too many fleshy gilled mushrooms out this time of the year. All right, yeah, that one's beautiful. I'm going to take this home. Whoa, 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 whoa. Look at down here. Holy smokes. There's another one. Looks like another hygrosabe. Oh, this one's kind of blown apart. But look at that. Look at how yellow this one is. This was a really pretty large one. Whoa. So this one <laughs> is what I would probably call flavescens. Now that one, definitely more orange. So it goes to show, I don't know this genus very well. But these are both definitely hygrosabes or wax caps. One way more yellow, one way more orange, and beautiful. How cool. So look at the stem on that, you know, the stipe. This one just fell apart. Um, I think it just did that with age. They just kind of exploded. There were three of them right there. How cool. And those ones were definitely yellow. So contrast here. Talk about flowers of the forest. Fungi flowers of the forest. How about that? Say that 10 times fast. But here, another hygrosabe. Big old gills. Just caught this before it's toast, but uh, wow, what a bouquet. So I hit the jackpot on this little area. I, I found hygrosabe growing in this area and Cufophilus, which is another type of wax cap that grows out here with these red cedar and sword fern. But uh, that was a really cool surprise. So here we are in March and the wax caps are definitely out. How cool. A couple pretty large mushrooms growing right here on the side of the trail. Pretty large brown mushroom. A different kind of LBM. I'm gonna pick this one and take a look at underneath at the gills. See what we got going on here. So it's a pretty nondescript mushroom. This one doesn't have a ton of really uh, outstanding features. It's just kind of a brown cap that gets a little lighter towards the outside edge. Um, the gills have kind of a brownish look, um, just kind of boring, no annulus, nothing very stand out about this, except that brown colored spore. Um, if it were rusty colored, you know, it might be in the genus Gallerina, but this is a really common spring mushroom that takes on a lot of different forms. So it can look big like this, it can look uh, much smaller. Right here, there was a really, really um, strong partial veil, but it's all but just like completely deteriorated away. You can see the ring zone there where the remnants are. But these ones are in the genus Agrosabe or Agrosibe. And so these uh, are edible, but I've heard they taste like grass clippings, not a real desired mushroom, but uh, a common spring mushroom. They grow in lawns, in flower beds, on the side of a woodland trail like this. So a grossabe, uh, praecox, or the Springfield cap, probably a good one to compare this to. It might be just a slight bit genetically different, but still, nonetheless, it's edible, non-toxic, but undesirable. So, you know, look for that, that brownish, that really brown color in the, in the gills like that this time of year. You know, kind of a hefty, medium to large size mushroom. 
and it usually does have a partial veil or remnants that are hanging off of here and when they dry out in the yard they get real cracked on top these ones are nice and moist but uh, the genus agrossa bee can look like a lot of different kinds of mushrooms but they're really common and if they have this brown colored gills and it's in the spring here in the pnw more than likely you have a grossa bee praecox or the springfield cap So this is really good habitat to be hunting for mushrooms in. Um, these conifer forests here in the Pacific Northwest are really good homes for fungi because a lot of the mushrooms associate with these trees. Although those are called mycorrhizal mushrooms, ectomycorrhizal mushrooms, not a ton of those fruiting this time of year. Uh, typically in the autumn and in the spring we have a small fruiting, but you know, these kind of salal bushes, um, the sword fern, the old rotten logs and stumps makes for a pretty rich, fungally diverse hunting grounds for those of us who just want to go out in the woods and, you know, discover nature. What an awesome way to discover nature is by discovering all of the fungi that's growing out here. So I like these kind of forests where there's moss and, uh, you know, fallen debris everywhere. These make for really good areas because some of the mushrooms live in association with the trees and some of the mushrooms, they uh, live on decaying matter. So we have both of those things going on here. So it's kind of a, a rich area to go for a stroll. Hey you guys, make sure to jump over to mushroom-wonderland.com and go into the description of this video to check out all the links to all the other social media for Mushroom Wonderland. Let's keep hunting in the forest. Yeah, right in the middle of the trail, we've got some mushrooms growing here. Um, I'm going to pick this, just take a good look at it. Look at that, this one in the genus Lacaria. So that's exciting. Spring type Lacaria popping up. Um, they've got this really woody stem, um, really widely spaced gills. They're going to have a white spore print. And there's quite a few different lacarias that grow here. There's a cluster of three of them. So I'll probably slip this one gently into my pocket <laughs> and go study it. I don't know the exact species of this. I think we have 20 something different lacaria here in the Pacific Northwest. So some of them require microscopy. All of them are safe to eat. None of them are very good to eat as far as I know. But uh, I think they're great to photograph. These ones, not so much. This, this is kind of an ugly specimen. Um, Compared to like your Amethysto occidentalis, that is the most beautiful Lacaria ever. Uh, but kind of nice, a few Lacaria. These are, I see a little, little tiny brown mushroom right there. I'm going to actually leave that alone because he's all by himself. But right here I see three more different uh, forest mushrooms. And let's take a look at one of these really quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unearth this from the very base and we'll take a look. At the base of this guy, you see that kind of white frostiness down there? That's what they call pruinos. So kind of like the film on a grape, that little white film that's called pruinos. And this one has striations on the cap, see those lines? And the margin is very thin right here. This guy's going to have a pink spore print. This one known as uh, Entoloma uh, holoconoidium. Um, and these are not known to be edible. They're just unknown edibility. They're pretty insubstantial and small. They have a very fragile kind of stem that just, you know, just gets destroyed really easy. But if you were to lay this down on a piece of paper, you'd have a pinkish spore print. And uh, the Entoloma is a pretty cold resistant mushroom. So these guys, there's three of them growing here. Oftentimes you just find these all alone, uh, kind of scattered throughout the forest. But, uh, not known to be edible, but one of the forest saprobes here in winter, the Entoloma holoconoidium. Check out this stick. This shows up in a lot of the winter videos, but right now, man, they are just really on flush. 
These guys are known as the poor man gumdrop or the alpine jelly cone. Any mushroom that has two common names is pretty special, is what I heard. <laughs> so this one also known as Gwipiniopsis alpina or the alpine jelly cone. It's an edible orange uh, kind of jelly fungi that grows on little sticks about the size of a quarter. I've actually found one on a stick that was a couple inches around before, but usually it's just sticks just like this. And they're very jelly-like. And uh, you could just eat them raw right off the stick to impress your friends, but they don't have much flavor. And I would advise against eating a whole bunch of raw mushrooms of any kind. They do have, uh, the cell wall is made up of chitin, which is indigestible. And so if you ate a lot of them, you could get a bellyache, you know, but they're kind of fun to show off and show your friends. Wow, look at that. That stick of them right here. I mean, they're everywhere right now. Um, so, you know, they're fun and they're beautiful, quite photogenic, really. Look how their little structure is with a little stem and a cap, just beautiful. So if you set up your macro camera just right, you'd have to stop down the exposure because they're so bright orange. It is very vibrant. They really stand out um, amongst the other stuff in the forest, but Gwipiniopsis alpina or the alpine jelly cone or the poor man's gumdrops. So this mushroom is known as Sterium hirsutum, or the false turkey tail. And when you flip over the underside of one of those, it doesn't have white creamy pores underneath. It's just kind of smooth. And so this one is a basidiomycete. So it's related, I guess, to like guild mushrooms and oyster mushrooms and stuff, but they're very tough, inedible. You know, it's just kind of like eating wood or a pine cone or something. Some people would steep turkey tails into tea but these being commonly called the false turkey tail, you would think maybe it just lacks medicinal power or perhaps it just lacks study. So anyways, you know, some people would say all mushrooms are medicinal. Um, this is non-toxic, so you could definitely make a little tea or a tincture out of it and use it. But Sterium hirsutum, a uh, white rot decayer that likes to eat hardwood and uh, really common. And uh, you know, it's the false turkey tail, but it ain't gonna hurt you if you accidentally mistook it and made some tea or something like that so anyways it's kind of a nice trail side log here gonna keep on moving this is what the heavy late winter rains in washington can do to the trail systems this place just gets pretty flooded but it makes for good mushroom habitat a lot of moisture in this forest so this is a mixed conifer forest right here huge douglas fir pseudosuga menciesii over here we have a red alder, these long, tall, stick-like trees. They're great habitat for oyster mushrooms, always growing alongside some wetland areas. And then right here we have western hemlock. This is probably the most dominant tree in this forest, but it's actually a pretty good mix of dug fir, western hemlock. This is great ectomycorrhizal habitat, so mushrooms that associate with trees and plants. They love habitat like this. It's dark, it's shady, it's mossy. There's not a lot of sunlight or wind in here. And mushrooms like all of that stuff. So I love coming out into areas like this where there's just a lot of water, a lot of ferns, a lot of moss, just a dripping Pacific Northwest forest. And if you don't have forests like this, man, you can just come out here and check out some of ours. Oh, look at that, perfect beaver, perfect beaver chew. This must have been like within the last couple days or something. That's awesome. So yeah, these waterways are made by beavers that live around here. They build dams and make these huge wetland systems. And they can actually be pretty pesky and block up um, streams that could otherwise probably run better and be better fish habitat. These clusters, I'm seeing these everywhere. These are parasitic Clytosabe, Clytosabe scleratoidea. These ones are growing on old Helvella fruiting bodies. So right here, 
there's an old Helvella that was trying to grow. And then these Clytosabe just grow off of this old fruiting body. That's kind of nasty, right? But uh, neither of these known to be edible, just winter mushrooms. But they're out, and they're doing well this time of year. So kind of cool. Here's a much bigger one. Look at that. Clytosabe scleritoidea. That's a, that's a huge fruiting body for that, actually. But some of these will contain muscarin. I'm not sure about this particular species, but a lot of Clytosaboid mushrooms containing muscarin that... There's a nasty toxin. Oh, some litter. But everywhere I look, the Clytosabe scleritoidea in this area, which is bizarre because I don't see any Helvella, but a lot of, a lot of Clytosabe. So, there you go. Common winter mushrooms. Don't eat these. Just leave them alone and keep walking. All right, I'm out in this grassy like meadow on the edge of the forest and right down here on the ground very very cool are these little blue green blackish looking mushrooms a nice fruiting of them so right here we've got them in the shade this one Arenia chlorocyania so the blue green Arenia and you can see how beautiful those are very bluish green these are a cold tolerant mushroom You'll often find an early spring and uh, pretty small pretty delicate very uh, vase shaped you know the gills are very much attached see that these are considered uh, you know inedible they're just so small that by the time you cooked them or anything uh, there wouldn't be anything left but these are also usually pretty rare and you don't find a lot all at once but right here we have quite a nice fruiting of them they're all over the area here this was tipped off by Dale Nelson thanks a lot man um, these are awesome really cool to photograph some of the bigger ones you know you can really see that blue green color you know it looks kind of like a black trumpet or something but Arenia beautiful genus of mushroom it used to be Omphalia I believe um, and then it was reclassified to Arenia so um, they're pretty uh, pretty small and they'd be easy to miss but when you pick a few of these and set them up nice for a good photograph um, it's really rewarding so what I like to do is get probably five different fruiting bodies of different ages and then I find a nice clump of them like this one you know growing and then I'm gonna set these up in a way that is beautiful so I can photograph them I will upload them onto iNaturalist and uh, look at all the different ages. Very nice. And uh, these are beautiful. So, very cool. I'd like to learn a little bit more about these. I don't know a lot about them, but they sure are gorgeous. And I'm excited to see them. So, thanks again, Dale. And uh, yeah, Arenia chlorocyania or chlorocyana. This one likes to grow in the grasslands in meadows and stuff um, in the beginning of spring. So there you go. Hey y'all, so thanks for joining that episode. Make sure to jump over to mushroom-wonderland.com, get some merch, come read my blog, check out some of my photos, whatever. If you love mushrooms, this is the place for you. Make sure to hit subscribe. We'll see you on the next episode. Much love everyone, peace out.